So if you remember in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 began with the creation of the universe. And then the focus narrowed to the creation of the earth. And then it narrowed even more to giving the earth form and filling the earth with life. And then the focus was on the creation of human beings, of the man and woman. And so the focus goes from, you know, very broad from the universe to the earth, to life on the earth, to human beings in particular. And that's the, the zenith of God's creation, the crown of God's creation if a man is mankind. Now going into chapter 2, we are provided with uh, further insights into the creation of human beings. Chapter 2 is not a second creation story. It's just providing us with more details about the creation of mankind on the sixth day of creation. And because the focus of chapter 2 is on the creation of mankind, it speaks very generally or in very general terms about the creation of, of the other things in the creation account. If you look at verse 4 again, you'll see what I mean. It says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when, when they were created and the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Okay, It's just giving us a general statement about the creation of vegetation on the earth on the third day. Again, the purpose of chapter 2 is to explain in greater detail the creation of mankind, not the creation of vegetation. So it doesn't give us much detail. It's just kind of an overview here about the vegetation. One thing I want to point out to you in verse 4, if you look at verse 4 again, for the first time in the Bible, God is referred to as the Lord God. The Lord God. Do you see that in verse 4? Now, the Hebrew word for God is Elohim, which is a very general term for the name God, a very general term for God. It, it can refer really to any God. It's even used in the Bible for idols or false gods. It's a general term for God, much like today. Uh, people use the, the word God very generally in many different ways. If someone says, I believe in God. Well, okay, which, which God do you believe in? Can you give me more details so I know who you're talking about? That's the word Elohim. But the word Lord here in verse 4, the word Lord is the word Yahweh. So this is Yahweh God or Jehovah God, if you prefer. Again, this is the first time we find the name Yahweh in the Bible. So this now is the God we're talking about. Just to be clear, we're talking about Yahweh God or Jehovah God. This is his personal name. And this is a big deal. This is a big deal that we're told his name here in chapter 2, verse 4. The God who created the heavens and the earth in chapter 1 the God who created life on the earth, the God who created mankind in his own image and likeness, Yahweh is his name. We're not talking about any other God here. We're talking about Yahweh. And the name Yahweh means the self-existing one or the eternal one. Yahweh, God, is the self-existing being the only self-existing being in all of the universe. Everything else is dependent upon Him for its existence, including us. Yahweh is the only eternal being. He's eternal. He's the self-existing one. Everything else is created. Everything else had a beginning. Yahweh is eternal. He's the uncaused cause. Yahweh is the, the one true God, and Yahweh is the God of, of redemption. He's the God. Now, we were introduced to Him here at the very beginning of the Bible. He's the God of creation. His name is Yahweh, we're told in chapter 2. And He's the God that we see throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's Yahweh who's going to make a covenant 
with Adam and Eve in the garden. It's Yahweh who makes a covenant with Noah and his family. It's Yahweh who makes a covenant with Abraham and his descendants. It's Yahweh who makes a covenant with the nation of Israel at Mount Sinai. And then when we get to the New Testament, guess what happens? Yahweh becomes a man. We have Yahweh incarnate, God incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ. Yahweh comes in the likeness of man. He becomes flesh. He dwells among mankind on the earth. In the person of Jesus. The name Jesus means Yahweh is salvation. And here in chapter 2 verse 4. We learn his name for the first time. Yahweh God. And this is the God of the Bible. This is the God who redeems mankind. And we're going to see as we go through the Bible. You see the story of redemption unfolding, culminating ultimately with Jesus Christ coming as a man and dying on the cross for the sins of the world and resurrecting the third day to offer forgiveness and salvation to mankind. It's Yahweh. So now that brings us to verse, uh, verse 7 here. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Again, God focuses now on mankind, the creation of mankind, the crown of his creation. Back in chapter 1, we were told that God made man in his own image and in his own likeness, and here we read that he formed the first man out of the dust of the ground. It's interesting that the human body is made up of about 11 different elements, and those 11 elements are found dissolved in the soil of the earth. Uh, Notice the word formed here in verse 7. And God formed man of the dust or the, the clay of the ground. The word formed here, it means to shape or to mold. Uh, It's a word that was often used to describe an artist making a work of art, making something beautiful. Uh, In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says that you and I, that we are God's masterpiece. We're God's work of art. He's, He's the artist. He's the potter. We're the clay. God is our maker. God made you and God made me. He formed us. He shaped us. He molded us as his masterpiece. And with everything going on in the world with this coronavirus and how it's impacting the whole world, you know, one of the things that, that we should be asking is, is what, what is God saying to us through all of this? And I believe that one of the things that God is saying to us is he's reminding us that he's our maker and that our lives are dependent upon him. That he's our creator. And that we're, we're not independent of him as much as we might think we are. We have been very clearly reminded of that over the last few weeks. That it's in him we live and move and have our being. And our very next breath is in his hand. And he's our creator. He's our, our, our maker. And our, our life depends upon God. And apart from him, we are helpless, and I think that we are, we are seeing that. Without God, we are completely helpless. God formed Adam out of the dust, out of the clay of the earth. And then God, it says, breathed life into man, and man became a living being. Now, the Apostle Paul quotes verse 7 in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 15. And I want to look at that together. 1 Corinthians 15. So if you want to turn there with me in your Bible. 1 Corinthians 15. I, I'm accustomed to hearing Bible pages turning <laughs> whenever I say that. And it's, it's, not, it's not the same with four people here uh, doing this. But I'm trusting that you're turning there. 1 Corinthians 15. And here Paul is talking about uh, the resurrection. And if you look at verse 35, he's answering a question here. And here's the question in verse 35. 
But someone will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? And so this question about, well, with what body do they have at the resurrection? And that's the question Paul is answering. If you look down in verse 45, he quotes from Genesis, from the verse we just read, Genesis 2, 7, verse 45 here. And so it is written, the first man... Adam became a living being. The last Adam, speaking of Jesus Christ, became a life giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man, Adam, was of the earth. We just read that in Genesis made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as was the man of dust. So also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man.